All right, so this is a what's going to be a shifter jack shaft to take the transfer of energy from our shifter rod across and then back towards the transmission. What kind of energy? Kinetic. All right. <laughs> so I made this nice little tablet doodler. This is drilled to the right size so it matches our uh, rod end. So I just need to weld it on the end of this jack shaft like so. So when you turn this, it you know it does one of those. Then there'll be another one on the other side, which you can't see, but we'll get there. I've been done. <clears throat> All right, jack shaft update. There is a thing happening over here. You can you just clip that, didn't you? Yep. But you can. Uh, You're do fucking that. it up. Yeah, it'll be fine. Do that. I got tab here and one over there to hold it in place. <laughs> Now we just need to do another lever arm here to go to our shifter thing here. Also, uh, hose clamps on all of the fuel lines. Oh, you actually got all of them? Yeah, I had oh, to no. scavenge a few and make ones that were way bigger fit, but I see. Uh, it worked out, I guess. Uh, we still have to get a fuel line for this, which I'm guessing will never happen. <coughs> uh, mounted the gauge cluster, we're going to end up doing some sort of dashboard to cover the whole front here, like we did last time. I don't know if we showed any of that. Uh, no, there really. was a sheet metal dashboard that we did. Wait, wait. Is that seriously how we're routing, routing the wiring? No, no. This is, this is the to-do list. <laughs> oh, that's the to-do list. Uh, so basically what we have is... A mess. Yeah, the key ignition. We have the starter, which we still have to figure out. There's four wires that goes go to that starter switch, so uh, just have to figure out what those go to, so that we can see about getting a different type of switch. And then have to figure out where to mount this, where it's not going to get wet. So that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's plenty of space back here. Yeah, maybe we can get some kind of container to put, like in the dashboard or something. Yep. As like a glove box. Sure. Which will really just hold fuses. Right. Uh, but yeah. All right. What else? Oh, I was looking at the clutch, but that's going to be, well, basically I'm just avoiding it. Well, I mean, I guess you do have wiring stuff that you can do instead. Uh, that's a good idea. Instead to of trying doing to, this. Yeah, instead of trying to be creative and functional and strong. Yeah, we also have to really try and find a pedal. Which is a pain. Yep. Because nothing's going to match, really. No. In hindsight, I was telling Josh, I, I wish we had just removed these pedals to begin with and set up like a universal style where they're all in a row fixed to a plate. It would have been a little bit cleaner. Yeah, it would have been cleaner. And easier. Now, anyways. Now, yeah. But this isn't going to go away. So. No, it, we've decided that that's permanent now. Right. Or we've made it permanent well, anyways. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to say that someday we might refine it a little bit, but I highly that, doubt that'll that's ever happen. That's not going to happen. Just like you said that that fuel line is going to be permanent now. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those things, you know, once it starts functioning, you just don't worry about it. <laughs> so. Status update. Because of Polish reasons, I ordered a bunch of left-handed thread um, rod Again. ends. Listen. Again. This no. isn't the first time you ordered left-handed ones to replace the left-handed ones. <laughs> no. That's not what happened at all. Uh, really? What happened then? No, don't worry about it. Irregardless. So the two right-handed ones that we have are right here for the shifter, so it's kind of adjustable there. And then over on that side, um, we switched over to just the quarter inch rod, welded the rod end onto it, and then we're going to weld um, that back together over here where that closed pin is. Which we did need to switch the quarter inch rod anyway, uh, because the threaded rod was way too shit. Yeah, it's a little bit too weak for that, you know, that long piece. is probably like 10 inches long. That's way too long for the threaded rod to be sturdy. Yeah, it pretty much just bent instead of moving the shifter. Yep. Currently, Brad is uh, dicking around, basically. 
Yeah, right now his current dicking around is focused on getting the remote brake reservoir working, I guess. I've been wrapping up all the things that Josh left behind. Well, at least you're doing something. All the loose bolts and unfinished No, you're the one that leaves loose bolts behind. Um, really? <laughs> that one's tight that you're undoing now. I was working on that before. Well, yeah, but I'm going to tighten it again. <laughs> but you are in my way. I need to weld that together right there. Just you can weld it. All right. I'll move. Okay. So we have a completely connected gear shifting mechanism all the way out to the way up there. Um, it functions. It could probably use some refining, but it does function. We can find all the gears with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, with some practice, you might be able to get better at it. Learning how to use it the right way with our new three foot long shifter bar. Yeah. We could also shorten that too if we want to eliminate some reflex. That's true. That is an option. It doesn't have to be three feet long. Okay, golf cart time yet again. So this bar here, everything from on my shifter from here all the way out there is nice and solid. The only thing that's really failing us, which it's still functional, but it's kind of hokey is the fact that that's so loose down there. So what I'm gonna end up doing, oops. What I'm gonna end up doing is welding a piece of something flat and skinny to the arm that's on the transmission go straight out as far as I can and just made up with a straight rod straight to it. So I gotta find a piece skinny enough and long enough that'll do that and then I gotta probably chop this here and then I'll butt the rest of the rod to it and put a sleeve on it make it look professional. No matter what we do our exhaust is gonna end up being pretty interesting. So we've been looking at options and really just avoiding it. We can get a header building kit for uh, for headers off of apparently some sort of Chevy GM vehicle that are actually the same size as those outlets there. But we just don't feel like spending the money or really thinking about putting the work into it. This is what it looks like to make decisions. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have gotten to a point where my sleeve is in place and that rod is welded together. Um, I have a piece of flat iron that I'm going to use to mount up to that um, arm right there. It's going to go in like that. The only thing I have to do is do a couple, put a couple bends in it. So in order to make this line up correctly so this, this arm still works and whatnot, um, coming straight off of this ends up meaning the rod has to go way too far in that way. So my solution is going to be to do probably like a 45 out and then like another 45 straight back out, or up rather, so that this rod can line up nice and easy with it. So I'm going to take this, I already marked a line on there that you probably can't see. Oh, there it is. I'm going to take it over to the bench, heat this up a bit, do a 45 and then a 45 straight up and that'll make it line up well enough to work and I'll probably have to do this, undo this notch a bit more but that's the current point
Where's my bolt? Okay, so I have a bend, and my goal is to bend right here so that it goes this way. That's the goal. And just like that, we have a shifting fork. I took in around the top of this off, because that's the side that's going to be facing out. This is going to get attached to the shift fork that's already there. I just need to drill a hole somewhere in the approximate center here so I could put a machine screw in there that fits our uh, rod ends and uh, should be good to go-ish. <laughs> so uh, we're planning on using the vice grips to hold everything together permanently. I don't know why we even bought all these like rod ends. I, don't know, it's, I mean that those host, or host clamp, the uh, vice grip works really good actually. But if you can't tell, our new shifting fork is, is on there. Um, it welded on there fairly easily. Um, the only thing I have left to do is put the rod end where that vice grip is and tighten everything up and it should be good to go. What do you think? I think your project is better than mine. Ah, you'll be fine. You just have to get through the first part. Ugh. <laughs> Brad's working on the actual clutch pedal. I've had a bad so. experience with the drill bit today. Apparently that set him off. Yeah, that pretty much killed the mood for the day. I see. Where's the nut? Um, right there. There's also a lock washer right there. There, I can say I did something productive today. <laughs> there we go. You're not even going to tighten it all the way though, are you? You're just going to zip it up. There, I did something productive. It's still a little bit loose, eh? Yep. I think those like are it. a little bit small, those fasteners. Uh, uh, uh. It'll be fine. Yeah. And that'll be the end of this golf cart video. Um, where we start next time will be with here with Brad figuring out how he's going to finish his pedal box idea for the clutch pedal. Maybe he'll finish it, maybe he won't, I don't know. But uh, either way, make sure you subscribe, like the video, like our Facebook page, the link is in the description. And if you're a returning member, make sure you uh, leave us a comment. Tell us that we're idiots, tell us that we're great. We don't care, we'll take either way. But most importantly, get out there and do something. Noisy Pete is doing his thing as usual.